This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. This week on the 1044, we take a look at the current landscape of electric trucks and how fleets are adapting to changing emissions regulations. Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. If you've been paying attention to equipment trends and trucking the last several years, you already know that electric trucks are here. All of the major OEMs either have something already deployed or there's some in the works. The move toward electric is mostly driven by stricter emission standards being enacted both at the state level in some places as well as the federal level with EPA's greenhouse gas emission standards. At the state level, California has led the charge when it comes to restricting emissions coming from trucks. I spoke with Nikki Okuk, the Alternative Fuels Program Manager at CalStart, who talks about what's going on in California and beyond and how fleets are adapting so far. That's probably exactly why we have the CalStart in our name, even though we're now a, both a national and global organization. Our work certainly started here 30 years ago for just those reasons. We've had sort of a looming truck and bus rule that was going to force a lot of fleets to retire a lot of their vehicles. Um, coming for a while. And so a lot of fleets are are sort of prepared for that, but we also have new rules and regulations that are going to come into play probably next year that are going to mandate some more aggressive zero emission transitions. So that means that a lot of folks have had to start to think about this. And, um, you know, we've, our lesson, one of our first lessons learned for all of this is that it used to be that vehicle purchasing started with the vehicle purchasing. <laughs> and now vehicle purchasing starts with thinking about infrastructure and fueling and where are you going to fuel your truck? So it's a, it's a different, it's a little bit of a change in, in how you might traditionally think about it. And so fleets having to take a step back and really get to know their utilities and try to understand better their duty cycles and what they're going to need for charging, I think has really been a big the big lesson learned by those first movers here in California. While some fleets are jumping on the bandwagon early and even going beyond what California is requiring, others are taking a slower wait and see approach. But before we hear more from Nikki, here's a note from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Did you know that 90% of the ash and soot trapped inside your DPF right now is caused by your engine oil? It's not like you can go without engine oil, so there's nothing you can do about it, right? Wrong. Chevron spent a decade developing a no-compromise formulation when it comes to minimizing ash output and maximizing engine protection. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology is an ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging by cutting sulfate ash by 60% and extending DPF service life by two and a half times. Delo 600 ADF also enables extended drain intervals thanks to an advanced antioxidant technology that prevents oil breakdown even at the high temperatures found in modern diesel engines. And by slashing the number of regens, Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology comes with a 3% fuel efficiency increase throughout the DPF's lifetime. If you're keeping score at home, that's decreased downtime, extended maintenance intervals, and improved fuel economy. That's real money in your pocket and time saved. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, but now you don't. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. We have fleets at both ends of the spectrum. We've got a lot of large corporate fleets who actually have goals that are much more aggressive than California's regulations. So those are the types of big name fleets you've probably seen in the news, right? Pepsi, Anheuser-Busch. Uh, FedEx, UPS, uh, IKEA, those those big name leaders have have said, in fact, that they plan to exceed California's regulations. And so they started really early by participating in pilots and demonstrations and getting the first generation of uh, zero emission trucks that were available from manufacturers a few years ago. Um, for the rest of us little guys, and I used to be a small fleet owner, <laughs> um, we don't we don't get invited necessarily to try a Gen One vehicle and 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 participate in those first trials. So this year has been a really interesting year. Twenty twenty one is the first year that uh, you will find every single major truck maker has a zero emission model commercially available. You can walk into your dealer at basically any like 
Daimler, Mac, Volvo, Peterbilt, Freightliner, International. You could walk into any of those right now and, and purchase a truck for the first time. So this really is kind of, I think, the first year that you'll find those small and medium fleets having initial conversations with their dealers. Like, how much is this really going to cost me? And am I actually going to save money on fuel? A big holdup for smaller fleets, as Nikki mentioned, is the cost of electric trucks compared to diesel trucks. That cost difference, especially in California where fuel prices are through the roof, will be offset relatively quickly, however. A good rule of thumb is an electric vehicle will cost you about twice as much. Then you wonder how how are you, you going to make up that difference? Well, there's a couple of good things happening. One, uh, you're going to save a lot of money on fuel just an incredible money on fuel. Almost every every fleet that we've seen who took that initial uh, that initial step and, and got a, their first few electric vehicles. I was on a, a meeting just yesterday and, and a woman was saying, oh my gosh, these fleets are shooting themselves. They're kicking themselves because they couldn't believe they waited so long to do it because of how much they saved in diesel. So actually the TCO calculator for some for most of these vehicles, you'll find it paying itself off within the first three years. So a good place to check that out is we actually have a total cost of ownership calculator on the CalStart website. Um, but also, as I mentioned, all of the dealers that now offer these electric vehicles, they have those, those total cost of ownership calculators right at the dealer. You can sit down and enter in how many miles you're traveling, what size truck you're using, and they'll tell you how quickly the fuel savings will pay off, especially if you can get into a, a beneficial agreement with your utility. A lot of utilities are saying, well, if you're going to install chargers, put it on a separate meter, we'll give you a special rate. Um, but that takes a little bit more planning. So again, that that idea that instead of starting necessarily with the truck, start by calling your utility or talking to your landlord because you're going to have to line those things up to really realize the full savings. What you would normally pay mechanics, tax, service, and maintenance here in California is higher than it is in the rest of the country. And for that reason, <laughs> with electric vehicles that have so much lower maintenance, uh, you realize a great deal of savings in that department as well. Even outside of California, Cal starts seeing efforts from trucking companies, especially those who work in larger metropolitan regions, as they begin to move toward electric for last mile operations. We know that electric vehicles aren't able to do long haul trucking, right? Interstate trucking yet, but it can solve for a large chunk of most truck, I think it's like more than 50% of trucking is that local, regional, last mile. And so you find a lot of cities across the country that are taking this, this on. How do we get last mile and short haul within our region converted over to electric that's available now because it's going to improve, obviously, air quality in our cities. And we've actually talked to a lot of drivers who say it improves also their work experience because it's quieter, cleaner, safer. You don't go home smelling like diesel. So they're thinking, so a lot of the, the regions, you know, the cities, they're thinking regionally. And you, you have cities like Chicago, New York, Denver, um, just all, all these cities that are really stepping up and saying, we're going we're gonna to move on this now, at least for our local and regional hall. Um, and then for the longer haul, you know, we have collaborations between states who are thinking about there's there's now a large MOU uh, between 15 states in the northeast and um, also some states in the northwest thinking about how to include fuel credits. So we've got states that are working on how to coordinate together and build also like long haul corridors. That's more for the next generation of work. Right. What's available right now is definitely the ability to move over your local, regional, medium and small vehicles. There have been moves over the last decade or longer toward other alternative fuels as well. Natural gas is one option that, like electric, is currently available. Several companies are also working toward hydrogen fuel cells as a diesel alternative. But for now, Nikki sees battery electric as the biggest winner so far in the push for alternative powertrains. Natural gas trucks have been around for a while and they're a great solution, especially for particulate pollution. And they do have cost savings built into fuel costs depending on what area you're in. So that's a good and present technology for sure. And then with hydrogen, that's some, a little bit looking forward to the future because not everybody has figured out how to generate hydrogen locally or how to overcome some of the barrier, cost barriers of trucking it in. Um, so right now, battery electric Electric is definitely representing like the breakaway category. Over the last 10 years, I think we've seen battery prices reduce 
by almost 90%, and we've seen huge growth in battery capacities. So that is certainly the technology that I think is making leaps and bounds and finding applications across trucking segments. For fleets based in California that have to meet more stringent regulations and want to start moving toward electric, Nikki explained that there's a number of programs in place to help reduce the upfront costs. The cost barrier here in California, because we, we have incentives for folks to buy vehicles, you know, we've actually been able to overcome that. Uh, so by by putting up the upfront cost, cash on the hood types of incentives um, or trade-in incentives, really. So retiring vehicles and, and getting even more. We have like three or four different grant programs and voucher programs, HFIP, Carl Moyer, Prop 1B. All of these things really help us overcome that initial cost barrier. And so for us, what I'm finding rather is it's more of a knowledge barrier. Uh, There's also just um, like a a hesitancy to try what is a very, what feels like a very new and different technology. Lots of folks want the, they want the, the plug-in and charging experience to be exactly the same as the diesel experience, right? They want to pull up and do it quickly and drive off. In reality, it, it might just end up being different. And it also means that, that we have to plan for that difference. So, you know, not all fleets, all fleets are very busy doing what fleets do, which is moving goods, right? They don't necessarily have the time and energy and staff to then learn all of the things that they need to learn about what kind of charges do you need? How can they be installed? You know, what, what does the utility offer? What is it? What does it mean to to opportunity charge or charge overnight? And what are the rate differences? Those are all complicated questions. So uh, in this case, the barrier is not necessarily cost anymore, right? It's really about knowledge and information. And so, uh, you know, getting that out there and making sure that enough people have the tools to make those decisions, because we want all fleets to benefit from what we see as big savings, whereas uh, very often it's the it's the most well-heeled and advanced fleets that have professional staff to look at these things that really get a lot of the benefits first. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. And if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. And until next week, everybody stay safe.